video is going to take you through some of the new features and enhancements in ArcGIS Online in the April 2018 release. This release of ArcGIS Online has introduced a new concept of content categories. So these categories help you improve the organisation of your content by allowing you to set high-level and sub-level categories, making it much easier for users to find your items. Administrators can set these category levels, either by leveraging Esri's pre-existing set categories or by creating your own. Categories can be assigned to an item in the same manner we set up everything associated with the layer, in the item details. So for example, here I have a layer of New Zealand historic weather events, spanning from 1868 to 2016. And you can see here we have a new section. This is where we define a category or change it if need be. Now some further changes you will have seen this year in the item details page include the new status bar and checklists. So what this does is it gives us hints as to how we can improve the item information on our page. Now last year we introduced the concept of hosted feature layer views. These views give you the power to create a focus window into your data. And naturally as we build out these views we end up with a lot of derivative layers. So you'll see here in the items details section, we now have the ability to keep track of and access any of these views or any tile layers that have been created from this master layer. Another quick tip, to ensure your organisation is using the most reliable and up-to-date data, we can also set the layer to now be authoritative or deprecated. This adds an authoritative stamp of approval for anyone looking to use this data in their maps. These historic weather events have been collected in various ways from various sources over time. So they now have over 13,500 records. And naturally as more information is collected, there'll be some historic data that was missed in the initial upload that we need to add in. Now what we're used to doing when it comes to adding new data in bulk to existing host of feature layers is to download a copy of the data, reconcile any new additions and any additional edits, and then overwrite the layer in ArcGIS Online. Now with the new Append Data to Layer tool, we can bypass that extra workflow. Here I have options to select either a CSV, Excel sheet, GeoJSON, zipped shapefile or zipped file geodatabase to add in my new data. Now in this case, this file geodatabase contains two extreme weather events, an Otago snow event that occurred in 1867 that was missed entirely, but also some information on a Gisborne flooding event that already exists in my layer. So really I'm looking to append new data, but also update existing features in my data set. Then by matching my global IDs I can update this layer. There are options to ignore features without a match and update the geometry for existing features, but I'm only looking to update the non-spatial attributes for these existing features, so I'll leave that as is. After matching any additional fields, I can update the layer. Now the next thing I want to show you is the new search experience in the Map Viewer. You now have a lot more control with the new table and list views, as well as the ability to filter down and drill into your content to find layers say by using those categories we set up or simply by using your folders. So once I've found my data set, I can then view the full description right in the map viewer before I add it to my map. Important to note too is that you will see the tick showing this data is set as authoritative, which I did before. So making sure we're adding the most authoritative data sets is so important, so this feature really helps streamline that workflow right in the map viewer. So you could see how many features were in that data set, and when this is visualized on a map it's often hard to see any sort of immediate pattern. This is common with datasets spanning large time periods. In ArcGIS Online, we can now easily enable clustering directly on our layer, where previously we would have, would have had to create a whole new clustering layer. Now immediately we can see that flooding has been the most predominant weather event in New Zealand, which I can adjust with a slider. You'll also notice, as I zoom into Wellington, my clustering scales with my extent, giving me greater granularity at each geography. And with the custom clustering pop-ups, we can see the difference between clusters and then singular events. So these symbols look pretty cool, right? They're the new Firefly symbols available in ArcGIS Online. And you can add them as you would any other style by selecting them from the point symbol drop-down. And they look especially great with the new Nova Vector Tile Base Map here. This adds a great futuristic feel with the dark background and glowing blue symbology. Nova is available in the Living Atlas, so you can use the same new search experience and add it to your map. Moving on to Arcade. Arcade is an expression language that is universal across the ArcGIS platform. In the web map, Arcade can be used to control the rendering, labeling, and pop-up display. Arcade can also be used to control the visualization and rotation of symbols. So this map contains a host of feature layer that is polling Gisborne District Council's Hilltop Server every five minutes to get the most recent river flow measurements. 
Here I have used a pair of custom symbols to represent the flow capacity gauge and a dial needle. For each site, I wanted to know the current flow value as a percentage of the total engineered or estimated river flow capacity. This is possible using Arcade. Under Symbol Rotation, we have an option to set expression. So we're just going to walk through what I've done here. And the first thing that we're doing is calculating the rotation. Next, we're getting the percentage of the total flow capacity at that site. And then determining the rotation of the needle on the dial, and then the corresponding percentage. Now we also need to take into consideration that flow could be over the maximum capacity. So we've done that here at the bottom. And even more than that, I've also used Arcade to complement the symbology in the pop-up, where low to normal values are represented in green, and those closer to the maximum capacity on the gauge are represented in red. So you can see how flexible we can be with Arcade, and the key here is that there was no pre-processing involved to calculate the fields I wanted to display. I'm just using the existing attributes in a bit of Arcade. So that was a bit of a walkthrough of some of the new features in ArcGIS Online. I hope you found it useful, and if you want to know more about what's new and what's coming in each release, check out the Esri What's New blogs. They've updated the site, so I strongly encourage you to head over and take a look.